Hi, my name is Jomer Dalona. You might not know me, but if you are on Instagram, you can find me on uh, my handle is at Shimmer that photography. And I started photography a year ago. I am actually a nurse, and I am still a nurse at the moment. And it's my full-time job. I'm just doing photography initially for fun, but later on decided I can earn some money from it. So. Uh, as I said, I started professional photography a year ago and today, with some luck, I reached 16,000 uh, followers on Instagram. Um, it's not really a lot, but it is something. Um, today, I w just decided to make a video for you guys, um, mainly because I wanted to help. When I was starting, I don't even have any clue with professional photography when I bought my camera I don't even know how to use it like I was just playing with it every day until such time that I got to familiarize the buttons and how exactly to use it but I wasted a lot of time just to keep practicing and I was wondering if I if there was someone who would help me uh, to hasten the process it would be much much better and so that's why I decided to start this video so I was really completely self-taught I just taught myself how to uh, shoot and then yeah so now I have the opportunity I have now the knowledge uh, it's still not the I'm still not the greatest photographer but I have enough knowledge to share with you guys the basics of photography. Right, uh, so when you start uh, photography, when you buy a camera, there's a lot of buttons and it's really hard to familiarize all of them. But surely you only need three buttons or three settings for you to get your photo right, to get the right brightness, to get the right blurriness and to get the right of everything and there are three things that you need to know about photography or three settings that you need to be good at um, first is the ISO second is shutter speed lastly is the aperture so with let me start with ISO ISO means international standards organization but it doesn't really make sense um, with its meaning it just means the sensitivity of the of your camera to light like for example it will start with 100 which I used most of my photographs I use 100 um, 100 is not very sensitive to light uh, you will need more lighting for you to have a brighter picture Whereas 16,000 um, 16, or 1,600 or 16,000 um, ISO, which I don't really use, um, because of the higher the ISO, it will cause more uh, noise in the uh, in the photo or the video. So most of the photographers, actually all of the photographers, prefer to shoot in a lower um, lower ISO so that it will not have any noise but for some reason you really don't have light and you want to, to make your camera sensitive to light so you just need to bring up the ISO and with that ISO higher ISO your camera in, in dark situations in dark lighting um, you still have a brighter uh, photo if that makes sense. So basically it's just the sensitivity of your camera to light. So the lower the ISO, the less sensitive it is. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive it is to light. So with harsh lighting, you only need minimal or low ISO. With dim light, you need higher ISO. I hope that makes sense. Next is the shutter speed. Shutter speed is just the length of time 
that your image sensor has been exposed to the light so the quicker the shutter speed the the quicker the opening was exposed so if you are shooting someone in motion um, if you're shooting them in a quicker shutter speed you'll get sharp photos you'll get um, yeah you will get them in action whereas if you shoot them in higher shutter speed I uh, know um, shoot them in longer shutter speed you will create like a blur um, effect on the photo like you will not be able to get to stop the time like if they're jumping you will see like the blurriness um, tracking going upward uh, yeah so that is a good effect if you wanted to use it with landscape photography especially there's falls or flowing river or there's a car moving that you want to create a a blurriness like a really nice blur then you will get to use high um, longer shutter speed which means you expose the the, the image sensor to to the light longer it's like you're taking a photo in a slow motion like King! but with quicker shutter speed it, you can use it especially in weddings you wanted to use like um shorter shutter speed so that you will get all the motions and it's quite sharp i hope i made myself clear with that yeah so if you want to take a photo in motion if you want them sharp then go for a quicker shutter speed if you want a blur or yeah if you want a blur in a mo and in shooting a moving object then you will get to use um, a longer shutter speed that is actually called long exposure most of the photographers love to use that one right. it's still recording okay uh, so where am i now? so let that's the shutter speed next will be the aperture when i was starting i was always using aperture priorities like to prioritize the blurriness of the photo because i just thought it's all about the blurriness but actually no i, I realize now about the blurriness but it's good to know um if you want a really blur background that's the aperture is actually aperture is the size think about your eyes with your pupils if if you shrink your pupils uh, the size will be smaller and that is the same with the aperture it's like the opening of the, of the sensor the light so the larger the aperture the more light coming in and then the shorter no the smaller the aperture the 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 less light will, will come in and yeah so just be mindful that the numbers doesn't quite go with the the size of the aperture it's inversely proportional if you're shooting in f1.4 or it is quite large aperture the opening is too big which means it you need more light and if you need more light but when you shoot it if you get to shoot an object or a person the background will be really really blur with f1.4 but the aperture bear in mind that it's larger if you're shooting with f10 it's quite smaller the opening will be smaller and you need just a little bit of light to make your photo brighter and with the uh, i'm lost Okay, you need a bit of light and with the aperture f10 you won't get much of a blur we blur in photography we call it depth of field so if you don't get much of a blur it's just shallow depth of field um it's just, the blurriness is so thin like you can still see the background but you won't get to uh, you will still see the background but 
uh, it's blur but it's not that blur. Uh, I hope I make myself right. So that's the aperture. Aperture is just basically for me to make it like base, really basic. It's the blurriness of the photo. So the lower the aperture, the larger the size of the opening. But the lower the aperture, the more blur you get. The higher the aperture, the less blurriness you get. So it really depends on your preference and what photo are you taking. So there's no absolute rule with photography. You just need to understand. And once you have understand everything, then it's really easy. I hope I help you. I didn't confuse you. Um, yeah, that's it for today's video. Maybe next time if I have time. I'll show you how to shoot in manual mode. Manual mode is the best mode because you get to manipulate those three settings and those three settings affects affect each other. So you really need to understand how it works. Otherwise, you'll get really dark photos, really bright photos. And with with good mix mixture of all those three settings, you'll get the right photos, the best photos. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. I hope I didn't waste your time. Thank you.